إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا او على سفر فعده من ايام اخرى يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العده ولتكبر الله على ما هداكم وعن سلمان رضي الله عنه قال خطبنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في آخر يوم من شعبان قال يا أيها الناس قد أظلكم شهر عظيم مبارك شهر فيه ليلة خير من ألف شهر شهر جعل الله صيامه فريضة وقيام ليله تطوعا إلى آخر الحديث صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد عدد ما ذكره الذاكرون وصل على سيدنا مولانا محمد عدد ما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد أفضل صلواته My respected brothers and sisters and honorable elders, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today is the 29th day of Sha'ban. And most likely the second last day of this blessed month of Sha'ban. We'll find out, inshallah, hopefully before we start the prayer, whether Ramadan will begin tomorrow or Sunday. The chances are that it is going to begin on Sunday, inshallah. This is a very important day. And the distance between us and the month of Ramadan is now very, very slim and very, very short. Only a few hours remain between us and the blessed month of Ramadan. So this is a moment to recognize the value of the month of Ramadan and re-energize <coughs> ourselves so we can make the most out of this coming blessed month of Ramadan. Not everyone gets to see the blessed month of Ramadan. This is an opportunity that even if we had to pay with our life to get the blessing of Ramadan, we would have done so. So this makes us very fortunate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought us this close to the month of Ramadan. Before the month of Ramadan, 
Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to pray in these words: Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Shaaban wa balighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, bless us during the months of Rajab and Shaaban, and enable us to reach the month of Ramadan. And then at the beginning of Ramadan, it is mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say. Allahumma sallimni li Ramadan wa sallim Ramadan li. O oh Allah, make me wholesome and good and capable for the month of Ramadan, and make the month of Ramadan best for me, so we can earn the forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala during this season of blessings. During this season of forgiveness, during this season of mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, on this day, I would like to share with you the famous hadith narrated by Sayyidina Salman Al Farisi radhiyallahu anhu, wherein he said, on the last day of the month of Shaaban, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam addressed us, and he said. يا أيها الناس قد أظل لكم شهر عظيم مبارك. O people, there comes upon you a great month, a month that is wholly blessed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala from beginning to the end. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes on to explaining the virtues. And the importance of the blessed month of Ramadan, in his own words, and then he concludes his khutbah. He concludes his short sermon by encouraging all the believers to do four things in abundance throughout the month of Ramadan. Let's read the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we can enlighten ourselves, and we can educate ourselves and inform ourselves of what a great month it is that is casting its shadows upon us. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam began by saying, "Ya ayyuhan nas, qad adallakum shahrun adhimun mubarak." O people, there comes upon you a great month. A month that is completely blessed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Shahrun fihi laylatun khairun min alf shahr. This is a month in which there is a night that is better than one thousand months. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is obviously pointing towards Laylatul Qadr, which has been mentioned in Quran. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala dedicated an entire surah about the importance of the of Laylatul Qadr, and we will talk about Laylatul Qadr in detail, inshallah, probably in the third on the third Friday of the blessed month of Ramadan. <coughs> and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Shahrun jaal Allahu siyamahu farida." This is the month. In which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has made fasting compulsory. Fasting is the most important worship of the month of Ramadan. In fact, this month is known as Shahr Siyam, the month of fasting. Shahr Ramadan, Shahr Siyam, because this is the month in which every Muslim, may it be a male or female. Adult must observe the fasting unless they are entitled to take advantage of one of the concessions of given by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Namely, they are traveling, so they are allowed to skip the fasting, or they are sick and therefore they are unable to observe the fast, or they have one of the other excuses that are acceptable to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Otherwise. Every Muslim must observe the fasting during the days of Ramadan for an entire month, whether the month is 29 days or 30 days. The month is the month of fasting 
Therefore, fasting is made compulsory by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Rasulullah <coughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَالْقِيَامَ لَيْلِهِ تَطَوَّعَ يعني جعل الله القيام ليله تطوعا الله سبحانه وتعالى made the standing in prayer during the nights of Ramadan and, and a voluntary act of worship it is a sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, to observe additional prayer during the nights of Ramadan which we know as Salat al it can also be called Qiyam al layl Because literally any worship, any prayer that is done during the night time is called Qiyam al layl So during the nights of Ramadan, we offer an additional prayer. Normally, we offer Salat al-Fajr, Salat al-Zuhr, Salat al-Asr, Salat al-Maghrib, Salat al-Isha, and then we're done. But during the nights of Ramadan, you can observe this sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu in masajid throughout the world. No matter which part of the world you go to during the month of Ramadan, you will see people are standing and performing Salat al-Taraweeh after Salat al-Isha. And this is Qiyam al-Layl, this is Salat al-Taraweeh that has been Alive in the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa since the day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa introduced it. So these are the two primary practices or distinct practices of the month of Ramadan. During the daytime we fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and during the night time we stand in prayer. Now I know as well as you know that this year and for another few years after this year, the month of Ramadan will be all in summer. And it's not easy to stand in prayer after having a long day of 18, 19 hours for another hour or, or another, another hour and a half before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But my dear brothers and sisters, as the hardship increases in our worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so does the reward increases. The reward also increases from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows us better than we do. So when we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the middle of the night, performing Salat al performing Qiyam al-Layl, Allah knows better than you and better than me how much sacrifice we're making only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not doing that to please anyone but Allah. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, the reward is also unlimited from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who appreciates our efforts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is shakur, who does not allow the efforts of His people, the efforts of His servants go in waste. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at our effort appreciates it and accepts it and gives us more reward than we deserve. So although this year and like many like many many years to come it will be difficult to stay in Salat Taraweeh at 11 o'clock or at 12 o'clock at night time but we should keep in mind that we're doing this for the sake of Allah. And we don't do it for 12 months. We don't even do it for 11 months. We don't even do it for 6 months. We don't even do it for 3 months. We're being asked to do it only for one month. This is another way to look at this and appreciate the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And I understand we live in a northern hemisphere and we are we're far up in north and therefore our days are longer than our brothers and sisters who are in south. So our days are obviously longer. But there is another way to look at this. And compare yourself to those brothers and sisters who are even more north than you are. People living in northern Europe, people living in Sweden, people living in Norway, people living in those places in the northern parts of England, their day is even longer. And Alhamdulillah, we have a jama'ah here that has come from England. You can ask them for their experience. Their fast, if our fast is 17 and a half hours long, their fast is probably 19 or 20 hours long. So they don't even get to have enough time to have their two meals at night time and perform the Salat al taraweeh at night time. So this is another this is another way to make us realize that we should thank Allah. Don't compare yourselves to people in Brazil or people in other parts of South America or South Africa or other other countries in Southern Hemisphere. Compare yourselves to those who are even more north than you are. And that will make you appreciate what you are enjoying as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only Allah can make these things easy for us. If you pray to Allah that, Oh Allah, I'm fasting for your pleasure. I'm fasting, seeking your pleasure. I'm, I'm standing in prayer to earn your forgiveness. So, Oh Allah, make these things easy for us and don't make it difficult for us. And Allah surely will make it easy for you. And if Allah makes it easy for you, then what, what do you have to complain about? And then the Prophet ﷺ went on and he said, مَنْ تَقَرَّبَ فِيهِ بِخَصْلَةٍ مِّنَ الْخَيْرِ كَانَ كَمَنْ أَدَّى فَرِيضَةٍ فِي مَا سِوَاهِ In this month, during the month of Ramadan, if someone offers even a voluntary act of worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the reward equal to the worship equal to a compulsory worship. Like offering two raka'ah of nawafil will earn you the reward of offering two raka'ah of Salat al-Fajr. And then he said, وَمَنْ أَدَّى فَرِيضَةً فِيهِ كَانَ كَمَنْ أَدَّى سَبْعِينَ فَرِيضَةً فِي مَا سِوَاهِ And whoever offered one, observe, one compulsory act of worship, Allah will give him the reward of offering 70 acts of worship. وَهُوَ شَهْرُ الصَّوْرِ and now the Prophet ﷺ explains, what is this month? This is the month of patience. During the daytime, you have to be patient. During the nighttime, you have to be patient. The whole month is the month of patience. And patience on many things, on many aspects, on many avenues. And then he said, The reward of fasting is nothing but Jannah. This is the month of sympathy. And this is the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the sustenance of His people. So whatever sustenance you get, Allah will make it increase. Either in number or more importantly, in quality, in barakah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give so much barakah in your sustenance that you will be able to earn the maximum benefit out of the same salary, out of the same earning, out of the same sustenance. مَنْ فَطَّرَ فِيهِ صَائِمًا كَانَ مَغْفِرَةً لِذُنُوبِهِ وَعِدْقَ رَقَبَتِهِ مِنَ النَّارِ Whoever will provide a fasting person with something to break his fast with at the time of iftar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the forgiveness of his sins and Allah will also Free his neck from hellfire. Meaning Allah will set him free from hellfire. So these are the two major rewards for 
giving someone something to break his fast with. Now, an important question is, should we give a whole meal to someone so he can break his fast with that? Or can we earn that reward with something as little as a cup of water or a cup of milk? This is the exact question that the Prophet ﷺ was asked by the companions. They said, O Messenger of Allah, We're not so well off and not each and every single one of us have enough spare to share with another person so he can break his fast with. So how can we earn the same reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rasulullah said, Allah will give the same reward even to that person who will give a single date to a fasting person. Or even a sip of water. Or even a sip of milk. This is the month, the first 10 days of which are sheer mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the middle 10 days are the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the final 10 days are the days in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets all people free from hellfire. And then the Prophet gave us one instruction. He said, Man Whoever will lighten the burden from his servants, from the people that work for him, Allah will forgive him. And Allah will free him from hellfire. So that applies to all the people who are in any capacity or in any position where someone is working for them. Either you are an employer or you have hired someone. And this applies equally to Muslims and non-Muslims. <laughs> you lighten the burden of your employees, your servants during the month of Ramadan for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in return, Allah will forgive you. And then the Prophet ﷺ concludes the sermon by saying, in this month, you should do four things in abundance. And what are those four things? He said, Two things out of these four are such, when you will do them, you're basically pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are two things that you will be doing because you cannot live without those two things. You cannot survive without those two things. So then he said, those two things by doing which you will please your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those two things are Shahadatu an la ilaha illallah wa tastaghfiruna. To say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah or to say la ilaha illallah and to say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. So saying la ilaha illallah during the month of Ramadan in abundance and to say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah in abundance. These are the two things. <laughs> We do it to, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other two things without which we cannot survive, we must have those two things. Allah, the, the Prophet said, فَتَسْأَلُونَ Allah al jannah You ask Allah, you pray to Allah for Jannah. Keep praying to Allah during the days of Ramadan, during the nights of Ramadan. Allahumma inni asaluka al jannah Allahumma inni asaluka jannah Oh Allah, I am asking you for your Jannah. Oh Allah, I solicit your Jannah from you. And also ask Allah for protection from hellfire. Allah, I seek your protection from hellfire. Don't throw us in hellfire. And then finally the Prophet said, Whoever provided water to a fasting person during the days of during the days of Ramadan at the time of iftar, Sahahullah min Hawdi Sharbatan, Allah will give him a drink from my fountain in on the day of judgment from the Kawthar. La Yahmahu Hatta Yahkula Jannah. If you drink from Hawd from the Kawthar, from the fountain of the Prophet on the day of judgment, you will never ever feel thirsty again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes one of those who earn 
who earn the forgiveness of Allah during the month of Ramadan and who maximize their earnings during the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us during the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease the difficulties, ease the hardships of our brothers and sisters in Syria, in Palestine, in Burma, in Africa, and throughout the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy upon them. This is an important announcement, inshallah, uh, for everyone. Uh, as we were expecting, the month of Ramadan will begin on Sunday, inshallah. It has been just confirmed uh, that there was no uh, reports of moon sighting anywhere in the world. Therefore, the month of Ramadan will begin on Sunday, inshallah. If there is anyone who can uh, do, who can send a message to Masjid al-Kareem and also to Masjid al-Rahman and Masjid al-Razaq, Please do it now. Does anyone have Imam Abdul Hamid's phone number? Is Brother Nidal here? <coughs> uh, can you have the announcement uh, at Masjid Rahman, inshallah? And can anyone send a message to Masjid al Razaq? Yes. Can you send it right now? So they can announce it before the, the Friday prayer ends. We're not checking tonight. Huh? North America. We're not checking off. No. We're done. How we go with Yes, we, we we always go with Saruti. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. we've been doing that for the last I believe six years now. Five or six years. And Alhamdulillah it keeps peace at home. <laughs> Can you uh, call 